getting into the water, then tonight's episode is for you. Hi, Anthony and Clayton here coming at you from Amanzi HQ. And uh, we've got an amazing, amazing chat lined up for you tonight, but we're really going to dive in deep into what really sets the accelerated surf program apart from all of the other different programs out there. This is these are techniques that you've been coaching people with for a long time, but they've only just, I suppose, in in recent times, really started to get noticed and be picked up by some of the big names within the surf industry and seen as a as a really powerful way to improve people's surfing. But before we jump into that, we're going to have a bit of a recap over what's been going on the last few days. Obviously, here on the Gold Coast, the the uh, the surf combo at Stradi. That just, that's just been running the last two days because we've had some good swell coming through, which has meant that we've also been able to get out into the water. But a few good waves. I know that, uh, Clayton, you've had two days of absolutely firing waves. Yeah, I'm pretty surfed out. All the points have been lighting up and it's been really fun. Um, no one in the morning, glassy, just, just great conditions to go surfing. Yeah, it's, it's been fun. And I think that so it, was, it was yesterday where you said it was almost like you were surfing over in the Mentalis. But uh, yeah. apart from obviously you've got a wetsuit on, which is a bit, of a, a bit of a big difference. Oh, just just the feel, like just good waves coming in. Um, just the weather was was pleasant. Um, sun was out. It was like hot and glassy. Yeah, and yeah. Really, really good conditions. Yeah, it's been really nice. And so today I was out surfing with Clayton. And if you've watched any of these before, you'll know that I share some of my experiences with you, so that you can learn from some of the coaching that I'm getting from Clayton uh, as as we go out and about there. And today. It was, uh, it was it was quite a big swell, and Clayton really pushed me out of my comfort zone today. And so as an intermediate surfer, I really want to share with you some of the key learnings that I had from today, which when I addressed them, it made a huge difference, not only to, to how I was surfing, but also how I felt out in the water. So Clayton had, had said to me, uh, yesterday, right, we're going to go surfing tomorrow. I knew it was going to be big. I knew it was a big period swell. And whereabouts Clayton was going to take me to surf, I knew that it was going to sketch me out a little bit. So I was really anxious from yesterday afternoon until until this morning. And so we, start, so we started paddling out. And so I paddled out. And me being me was paddling, paddling, paddling. And the first thing that Clayton said to me, which I think was your, your, like your golden quote, of the, of the day was I, I wrote it down was don't fight the water you can't beat it so just elaborate a little bit more there because i was putting a lot of effort in and you instantly just turned around with that and it just changed everything so we, we literally walked out and there's these big foamies coming through um and it was just like almost it, it was the east well so there's lots of foamies coming mm. through and Ant was just going and just trying to motor as that's how you do it isn't it the white water <laughs> So I was just like gently subbing, gently subbing, conserving energy, waiting for that water to sort of rush back out to sea again, um, and then just sort of follow the water out, where it was almost like you're trying to swim against the ocean. And I was just like, what are you doing? You're just going to get tired and fatigued. And uh, I think you were patting your heart out, and I'd be yeah, I was, I was, I was, I was exhausted really, yeah. really, really quickly. Yeah. I was pretty proud, first of all, because I was keeping up with you for the first 40, 40, 40, 45 <laughs> seconds, maybe. <laughs> we, and, we must have done 30 push up push up. It was, it was pretty heavy. Oh, it was intense. And then there just came this one point where all of a sudden you accelerated ahead of me, and then I was just left trying to duck dive and, and just get under these waves. And, I, well, I, and to, to me now, I still think it's some sort of magic trick that, 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 that you did. So there's another coach who explains this really well, Twiggy, and he's an Amazi surf coach in Bali, and he says that water wants to be with water. We've got some of Twiggy's uh, people on tonight as well, I think. Beautiful. Okay, so great guy, taught me a lot of stuff about water. And um, when the water flows in, it's got to go back out somewhere. So you almost just got to wait for that uh, the water to sort of flow back out and then just follow it out. So I was, I was kind of waiting for that while you were just fighting it. <laughs> And it didn't work. It clearly yeah. didn't work. So, yeah, you used so much less energy compared to what I did, and you got out there a lot quicker. Also, one of the key elements in the when we're out the back waiting for waves, I was like, paddle less. Mm. Um, because you you had some anxiety when, before you caught your first mm. wave. So you're paddling so hard and pulling so hard that you're actually turning the water into bubbles. 
and getting no traction. So you're going like hang bubbles, on, bubbles, on. bubbles, bubbles, but you ain't moving anywhere. Hang on. So just dive a little bit deeper there on that because I – I like to think of myself as a uh, as a reasonably strong paddle. I used to be a good swimmer, but you're saying that yep. I created bubbles. So what would a lot of people be doing, which they could maybe next time they're paddling for a wave, they could look at to see if they're making that same mistake? Well, when you paddle out, you've got a really efficient stroke mm -hmm. because you're covering a lot of distance. So if it, if it wasn't efficient, you'd actually be uh, pushing water or slowing down. So kind of the same way you paddle out when you paddle into the wave. A lot of people put their heads down and what that and try to reach really far forward. And okay. what that does is it creates lift and it doesn't really give you a nice deep stroke. So this is something that I learned from Rob Case, a really good surfing padding mm. technique is you almost want to just put your hand about an inch under the water and then glide through the water when you're paddling instead of putting your hand on top of the water and lifting and then trying to pull water as hard as you can and just creating bubbles. Oh, wow. So you're almost getting a lift and bubbles, lift and bubbles, and uh, you get no traction in the water. So stop slapping the water, yeah. and instead, just like, it's a golden nugget already. We're, we're, we're already firing out the content. So yeah, that's, just, uh, so, just so that I can see, we're, we're using a different, uh, a different platform tonight to, to stream out to you. So can I just get some, some, uh, some love? If you're watching this evening, I can see that we've got 21 people on. Can you just give, a, give us a thumbs up, give us a, a comment? In the, in the in the box below if you're excited to find out about the the land-based surfing techniques which we're going to get into going to get into shortly but one thing that i think yep yeah. landon from new zealand hey landon oh i thought it was some random comment but it's not it's, no, it's no. <laughs> <laughs> i was looking down there going that's uh so apparently i can put these up on the screen there we go Landon, you've, 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 you've made it up onto the screen. So I'm kind of learning this piece of technology as we're going through. So just bear with me this evening. I don't know how I get you off, Landon. So you're joining us for the entire time <laughs> by the look of it. But uh, I think one thing, and I think this is really, which is why this is a really good dynamic of having me having a conversation with you is because obviously you're a surf coach. You're, you're, an, you're an amazing coach. You're also, your surfing skills are also way, way, way up there. Then I'm what... I would class as your everyday kind of surfer, your, your, your intermediate surfer. And so one thing that I thought was really funny today was, or not, not really funny, I, it, was, it was a bit of a, uh, I, I, was, I was super pumped. And I was like, yes, that was an amazing wave. And yeah, it was shoulder high. And I was just like, hang on a minute, that was not shoulder high. Like when I took off, I felt it was way above my head. And I think that as, as intermediate surfers, sometimes we can, like there is a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety around when it does get big. And I don't think yeah. that that is spoken about enough. I think a lot of people just try and put on this brave face. So for an intermediate surfer, one of the big, I think one of the big shifts for me today was when you got me to relax more and be more present and more in the moment. Because up until that time, I've, I've got no problem in saying I was, I was I, I spent the whole afternoon the day before being anxious. I spent the whole paddle out being anxious. I was, I was excited, but I was holding so much tension. Yeah. And that's something which you, which you see a lot so in, in, in intermediate surfers. Yeah. So what happens is um, if you're an intermediate surfer who enjoys, say, smaller waves, for example. Andy, he's from your coast. Andy Hewitt is on. Let's, 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 there we go. Andy's up. He's, he's, he's a place to land him. <laughs> Okay, so if you enjoy small waves and then suddenly you force to surf some bigger conditions, yeah, um, those people often want to still catch those smaller waves that they're comfortable with. Mm. So they're not yet ready to deal with that uncomfortable issue of catching a bigger wave. But from your perspective, once you did catch that bigger wave, how much easier was it? Look, it was... Doing, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to try and uh, sugarcoat this. It was still scary. I was, yeah. I, I, I was super scared. But once you told me those few little things yeah. to help me flow it, so, so that paddling really fast, you then said to me, just feel the wave yeah. instead. And once I started feeling the wave, and, and, and so what I did was while, while we were out there, I actually practiced just, even, even ones that weren't going to break, I just let myself uh, just yeah. do a little bit of a glide just so I could get a bit of a feel as to that motion going forwards, which then made that point where I then went to take off on a wave that much easier because I had a bit more of a, a better feeling. But feeling was the first thing. Then the second thing was that first wave, which I, so I took off on a, I think it was a bomb. 
Okay, it was, a, it was a pretty big wave of the set, and it did not end well for me. I got stuck in the lip, I went, I went straight down, got absolutely pummeled. And then when I came up, I had taken the first wave of the set, and then I had to deal with the other ones that, that were coming in behind me. And uh, yeah, it was, a, it, was, it was an interesting, probably, it felt, it felt like about five minutes, but it's probably only about 30 seconds. But the big problem there was I was looking down. I was so I was so worried about the takeoff on this bigger wave that I was looking down and and you said to me that's exactly where I'm going to go because that's where I'm looking. Yeah. So when you do pull into a wave, you always want to pick the line and you want to read how the bottom's moving along the the shelf or the sandbank that you're surfing mm. on. But when you look down, you, you lose all that information and um, as soon as you start dropping your chin and looking down, you almost want to flip over and that's kind of what happened to you. Whereas when you arch about Okay, so when my chin went down, that was then going to cause the, yeah. the flip over, yeah. which... The way it's pushing you, your chin's going down, so the tail's lifting. Right. So what I try to encourage is to almost arch your back. And this is the Oreo biscuit classic yeah. here, isn't it? Yeah. Push the tail down. Now, the earlier you start pushing the tail down, you'll feel the wave trying to lift you up. And if you just resist that, the wave has to push you forward. Yeah. And then you can just start gliding into it as it's pushing you, mm. and you've got so much time to stand up. Yeah, so there was uh, the feeling, the not looking down, and what was the other thing that I wrote down? It was, oh, and, and the whole thing was, was to slow down. Yeah. Just slow everything down. There's Don't so panic and so many take thoughts time. going through your head mm. that your mind can't process all those thoughts. Yeah. So it's, um, probably only deal with one, one bit of information at a time. Yeah. So if you just look where you want to go and just feel it, you'll start making all the right decisions and the right choices. Yeah, so so what I what I want you to get out of out of out of that was when it comes to taking off on bigger waves where you're you're putting yourself outside of your comfort zone, what really worked for me today was was just uh, because I, I if, if you try to think as you just said, if you try to think of too much, then you end up overthinking and then everything yeah. goes wrong. So it was feel the wave, slow down, and instead of looking down, look where I wanted to go. So those three things, as I started to paddle, it was like, okay, feel it, stay stay calm, don't go too erratic, and look about where I want to go. And as soon as I did that, I then was much happier paddling in and taking off on those waves and going down. And yeah. in the end, I had a, had, a, had, a, had a really good surf after a hectic first 30 <laughs> seconds. But yeah, so like that, that, that was amazing. So hopefully that was helpful. If that, if that was help, helpful for you, can you please show us some love there in the comments? If there, if if those if, if me sharing my experiences with you is is helpful and you can learn stuff from from what I'm learning from Clayton, then please make sure that, that you let us know because otherwise I'll just get Clayton to to, to start talking. But I do think that this is, is yeah, going to be valuable for a lot of we people. We try to find the right platform to deliver this. Mm. So um, we, we are going to try various things on different shows. Yeah. Um, so yeah, more feedback from you guys, the better it is. Yeah, absolutely. And 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 as we've said in the last few of these, what we're really trying to create with what we're doing and putting these out is to create a community. And it's a community of people who want to grow as surfers, but not only just as surfers, but also grow as people and just really enjoy the 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 art and the sport of surfing and 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 well, have more fun. Surfing has so many links to the outside world. Yeah. Like. I was coaching you on surfing, but you're coaching me on, on talking on camera yeah. and you're going, oh, so it's, it's just like talking, you got to slow down and get your words out clearly. I'm going, it's just the same. Yeah. So it's a really good metaphor for life. So if you get surfing right, it's the same approach to life, I suppose. Yeah, I, I, I was I was sure that you were gonna come out with the Claytonism then. So there's a there's a, a, a an amazing and there's, there's an amazing group of ladies that that Clayton coaches. And Clayton, if, if you've watched any of these, you'll know that Clayton sometimes comes out with some really weird analogies and some really weird phrases. And the, the, the girls have now called them Claytonisms. So we're gonna try and collate a few and then put them together as one big video, or even make a book, because he does come out with quite a lot of them. So <laughs> so let's uh Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna put this. This, 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 is, oh. this is this is this is. A, I don't, so I can't see all 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 of the names. So whoever has put this, it is it is a fantastic oh. question. Clay, does making fart noises help with tension in big surf? Depends on which end they're coming out of, I suppose. <laughs> and if you're wearing a wetsuit, if they come out the bottom end, you end up looking at the uh, end up inflating your wetsuit. 
So the fart noise. Um, a lot of people when they surf, they forget to breathe. And um, I've actually coached girls and guys before who've surfed the entire wave and they're going, <gasps> <gasps> and then they breathe. So what I suggest to them um, just to help relax with some of the tension is just to make a fart noise. And it's the most <laughs> silliest thing that you can do. But as soon as you release the tension, you start breathing, your body yeah. starts moving better and you can start thinking better and you can start relaxing. So um, boxers will go like, and throw a punch. Yeah. So if you surfing and make a fart noise, okay, you're gonna throw a better twist. <laughs> so yes, it is a high performance maneuver, and the fart. It's, it's noise, a high performance maneuver. Uh, do, doing a fart noise. Here, here we go. This could be. Is this a Clayton-ism? I don't know if this is a Clayton-ism, but it's a pretty good one. But basically, the longer you hold the fart noise for, <laughs> the bigger your twist, the more spray you're gonna throw. So if you just go. It's going to be a little flick. It's going to be no spray. But if you just like, <laughs> and the biggest fart noise you can, and the biggest twist you can. Those are two things that you don't want to go together. The bigger the fart, the bigger the spray. Clearly, that's just not good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I get it. But in other words, just breathe when you're surfing. Um, and yeah. the fart noise is a funny way of doing it. So I use it with all the kids, and it works really, really well. Yeah, and, and in saying that, and I, I, I don't know if this is something that you've told me to do, if I've heard you telling somebody to do this on the ramp, but you've told them to almost laugh as they're going up and doing a turn. You told them uh, to laugh or, or go, yay, no, or no, something no, whistle. like that. Whistle. Whistle. Okay. Okay, because you can't hold tension and whistle. Like, you have to, you've got to relax to whistle. Okay. Yeah, so okay. again, it's just I'm trying to get them to breathe. Yeah, yeah you're right. Okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. So we're going to ask a couple more questions. Uh, so if you have got a question, chuck it in. We'll ask a couple more questions, and then we will go into the main event for this evening, which is all, which is all, all the. Uh, okay, hang on a minute. I'm going all over the place. I. Okay, this is. I'm going to have to read this out because it doesn't all fit in there. So I would describe myself as an intermediate surfer and can really relate to how you feel about the bigger waves. He. I live quite a long way from the sea and have difficulty maintaining my stamina out of water. Do you have any tips? Thanks. So whoever that is, I can't see who, 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 who you are because of the platform that we're using, but amazing question. Have you got any advice there, Clayton, on how to increase stamina? Yeah. Um, I trained with some guys back in South Africa. The guy's name was John McCarthy, and um, we did lots of in-the-water training and swimming. Um, and swimming is so good for stamina. Um, but not just just swimming lengths, like having like really sprint one length of a 50 meter, 25 meter pool, yep. and then swim the next one underwater. Oh, wow. So, so, so you're doing breath hold training as well. Breath hold training okay. and um, like really sprinting. And you'll find that when a big wave comes through, like you could, you've got so much power in mm. your stroke. Um, and that for me gave me so much confidence to tackle bigger waves. So I reckon swimming is one of the best things that you can do. And then um, probably just just holding some poses like um, I think it's called is it a Superman pose, whatever, where you get your thumbs up and you arch in your back. So that that back arch is an integral surfing pose or posture when you're paddling. You if on screen you really arch your back and paddle. Because when you're paddling, you're trying to almost mimic the shape of your board. So if you arch on your back, you're paddling on the flattest part of the board. Right. But if you if you're lazy and you your chin's down, you're almost going to push your nose and you're going to mm. push a bit of water. So the back arch is really important in trying to get a good plane when you're surfing. Okay, so the, so the back arch as well. Fantastic. Yeah. Thanks for that question. That was that was absolutely amazing. So let's let's dive into into the, the the main topic of this evening, which if you have seen the accelerated surf program, you'll know that it's made up of three main components, which is the science, the simulation, and also the surf side of things. And the simulation is something which, as I said at the beginning, you've been doing for years. You've been teaching this people for, for for a really long time, and Recently, a lot of people have kind of gone, do you know what? This stuff actually really works. But a big mistake that a lot of people are making is that they, they're, they're not seeing how this links. These, these things that you teach, because it is, as I like to say, Mr. Miyagi style stuff. It's weird stuff that, that we're doing. How this relates. And a lot of people don't see how, how it relates to surfing. And we, we had a, I remember seeing a comment on Facebook and it was, you're better off spending time in the water. Now, 
very quickly, let's let's explore that because I know that you spoke the other day about okay, this. So I've been coaching for over twenty years now. Yep. Okay. So I've spent a lot of time standing on the beach watching people surf, and I'll go pick your hands up uh, when you want to create some speed, and they just they don't do it. So I'd be pulling my hair out trying to get information to someone. So I eventually got some helmets with walkie talkies and I was going, now pick your hands up. And they would still barely be able to do it right. Um, I'd video film them and go, look, hands are down, get your hands up. And there'd still be no sort of, no breakthroughs happening. So when I started doing simulation training and drill, running drills, that was probably where I saw the, the, the best pick feedback. Yep. Um, so we've been doing surf skate training for probably over 10 years now. And when someone does a, a lean, the board will turn, but you almost got to stand up and drive to make the skateboard project across mm. to the ground. And I saw a lot of the crew had issues creating drive. And this also stems back to being on some of the boat trips that I've been on. Um, a guy would catch one of the best waves of his life, but the wave would just like run off without them. So they didn't know how to coordinate their bodies to actually create drive from their bodies to keep up with the section. So what we started doing is um, I'd get guys on a piece of cardboard and make them slide on the carpet up and down the boat and just compressing and throwing the hands and extending with the right um, hand-eye coordination, mm. getting the top half and the bottom half to talk to each other. Those guys, by the end of the week, were flying past sections and having some of the best ways of their life. Yeah. So and so, so cardboard surfer though didn't start out as cardboard, did it? No, no. Um, this is uh, this this I, I, I thought was a bit like um, when you see the the Shaolin monks training and they're like putting their hands into 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 rice to make their, their fingers really hard on the end and then they're, they're like resting spears. You used to get people to to do the slide on one of these, didn't you? Barefooted. Yeah. So they were taking their, the poor kids were taking their skin off on the grip tape of these of these skateboards without any wheels. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's where I said it all started, wasn't it? And and so you coach a lot with the with the Kui kids. Yeah. And Matt from from Kui was was I was speaking to him the other day, and he was telling me that he's got some footage of you. You used to get broken boards. It's, talk a bit more about that and how yeah. this couple slide the couple stuff has evolved so over the last it, it has evolved so if you ever got a, a an old surfboard and try to slide down a um a sand gene if you're on the back foot the board almost wants to roll down backwards so wherever the pressure is and where, where you weighting the board that will make the board go down in a straight line so by having more weight in the front foot the board would track down the, the sand gene better and you had to coordinate your hands forward and keep them level to get the same thing. Mm. So we took that one step further and we got the guys on some skateboard decks and try to get them to move from point A to point B. Um, if they weren't coordinated, if they weren't bending their legs, um, the movement was really, really difficult. So we used to have competitions on the boat to see who can actually generate the most speed. And um, competition is always a good thing, especially on a boat trip after a few beers and stuff like that. <laughs> so it got pretty interesting. But um, you'd be surprised at how well the guys learned how to start moving in a very short space of time. Mm. Yeah, or yeah. from sliding a skateboard deck across the concrete. But the problem was um, trying to find skateboard decks is really, really difficult. So the evolution from that was then I'll be, I'll be back in two seconds if you if so I, I, we, we've got a comment here that people are asking questions but they're not coming in to the feed here i i've just if you wonder why i was on my phone i've been trying to see those questions so i can see that we have had a couple of other questions come in if we do miss your questions this evening then uh then we're sorry what we'll do is we'll have a look through the feed afterwards and we might uh we might do a separate video and i'll and I'll get all the questions out and then we can answer them. But we will answer as many as we can. But we'll be back in two seconds, because I'm just going to get the uh, the evolution of the the cardboard or the, the slide. And then it's, it's now the cardboard slide. So this is so so yeah, this year, is year 2020. And this is what we've come down to. Year 2020. Um, check, out, check out this. This is, uh, this is the new board. Look at that. <laughs> this is 6.3. Look at the volume on this thing. Look at that. But yeah, that's now probably the cheapest piece of surf training 
probably, probably cost you about 20 cents, but what it will do for you, it'll give you hand-eye coordination. It'll teach you how to use your knees, how to stay in balance. Um, you can even learn how to do turns on it. Mm. So, so obviously this is something that is inside the program, but if somebody really wanted to, because I mean, you need to kind of go into a little bit more depth and detail with it, but if somebody wanted to just have a bit of a play around with this, yeah, uh, how, how do I do it? Gr take a piece of chalk, um, put a mark on the ground, mm -hmm. and stand behind the chalk and see how far you can slide it. You want to at least get like a good meter out of it. Okay. And you sort of stand shoulder width apart, would you say? Yeah, probably about um, hip just slightly wider than your shoulders. Slightly wider than your shoulders? The same stance that you would have on your surfboard. Okay. So imagine you're standing on your surfboard. Yep. And you just stand on it and just... Compress your legs, forward. throw your slide hands, forward. extend and try to slide across the ground. And it's surprisingly difficult at first to get the coordination happening. Yeah. But it does make a huge, a huge difference, though. I've, I've definitely when you've got it right, you can do the cardboard slide across uh, a floater section. You can do it through a barrel section. You can do it from a bottom turn going up a wave. Um, if someone's dropped in on you, you can cardboard slide past them. <laughs> like, it, there's tons of applications for it once you figure out how to use it. We should um, we should try and uh, edit a video where it's actually you uh, you are, you're overtaking <laughs> somebody and actually just like put up his cardboard there so you're like you're sliding past the person on the, on, on the cardboard but so, so cardboard slide is something that, that that that's now being shared a lot this is this is being spoken about a lot once people have people sort of like they have that confused look on their face first of all but once they've done it and then they've taken it into the water yeah. as you say it's they notice a difference it makes a huge 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 difference i know that a, a few of the people on tonight have uh have have, have been doing the cardboard slide and they're and they're fairly new to it and they've and they've noticed the difference in it. But cardboard slide wasn't the first concept that you ever came up with, was it? No. Um, so when I was teaching guys on the carver or on surf skates, um, I noticed that a lot of people are heavy on the back foot, which is really dangerous because if you press in the back, you can almost slide out and crack your head open or something dangerous. Mm. So I'm trying to get people to stand more centered and have the weight more on the front foot. Okay. Um, if you watch anyone drop into a skate ramp, they'll go front foot and drop in. Whereas a lot of surfers, when they stand up, they'll go back foot and they'll have a hard time dropping and getting speed. Um, the reason for this, I think, is when surfers stand up, that they, they, they push up, but they put their back foot on first, mm. and then they put their front foot, and they, they almost twist sideways, which makes them back footed. Mm. Whereas if you watch a skateboarder, they put their front foot on a board, and they turn front on, and then they push for speed with their front foot on the board. Yeah. So um, it's difficult because of the pop-up in surfing to sort of um, emulate the skateboarding, but ideally, when you do get up, you want to try to get into that, that skateboard position. It's a better way to create speed by being more on your front foot and facing forward. Yeah, and so and so the the Bosu surfer is, uh, and, and if you don't know what a Bosu ball is, it's like a half Swiss board. But we're going in here. I can, uh, not here. I'm, I'm going in here. That doesn't matter. I'll, I'll I'll explain it to you. It's like a half Swiss ball, isn't it? With then a plate or a circular plastic along. Yeah. On the, on the top of it, yep. um, and when you stand on it, it just wobbles all over the place. And so, what you get people to do is there's a whole bunch of different exercises to go on it, but ultimately, it's you get people to jump on it, and then. So what I found when people went into a uh, a lunge or a squat on the Bosi ball, their legs would just shake, <laughs> and then the board just shakes. So what they were suggesting to me is that their legs aren't strong enough. So those people are probably bending their backs rather than keeping their back straight and bending the knees. So think about someone on a trampoline. If you went to the trampoline and tried to bend your back mm. to create lift and height, you'd almost bounce off in the wrong direction. So you always keep your back straight and bend your knees. Yeah. So then that's what I was trying to emulate on the BOSU ball. Hop on the ball, keep your back straight so you've got balance. And then utilize your legs and your knees for compressing and extending. Yeah, and I think that um, the having the back bent. It's a huge, huge problem. Yes, you see it so, so, so much. Now, I'm far from perfect, and I know that I still bend my back a lot. I'm now, now that I'm aware of it, I know when I'm doing it. And then. Recovering, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Not I'm recovering, I'm trying to do something. But you see it as soon as you know all these things. And this is. 
one of the from from having one on one coaching with you uh, and also knowing all about the program and 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 discussing all of these ideas with you now i know a lot about in the water and you 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 and you Once and you, the switch you, has been yeah. turned on you can't turn it off it's just yeah. ugly surfing's ugly surfing and there's so there's there's different yeah. different levels of awareness when, when it comes to a thing so there's the how does it go so it's un- unconscious incompetent isn't it which yeah. is people who are, if we put it into surfing terms, unconscious and confident would be somebody who you is... don't know what to do or how to do it. Okay. And then it goes consciously incompetent. And if you're a surfer, that That's would put you in... That's you know what to do, but you still don't know how to do it. So you know what to do, but you know how to do it. And then you've got... Well, you can't do it well. And then you've got... What's the, what's the next one? It is then... Consciously competent. That's it, consciously well, competent. You've got to think about something yeah. and then you can do it. Yep. And then the other one is unconsciously competent, which means you don't even have to think about it, you're just doing it unconsciously. Yeah, it just happens. You don't even have to think about it, you get your hands up or yeah. you're pressing and extending. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I suppose there as well, we're, we're now sort of tapping into the mind surfer side of things, which is another part of the, of the, of the, of the program, which is the, the psychology around surfing. And I think that we, we, we found out earlier on when I was talking about surfing. The, the slightly bigger waves that psychology plays a huge part and it's massive and and i think just going back to there's a question i was going to ask you earlier on which was and it was one of the comments and it's somebody said you're better off spending time in the water now while it's good to be in the water you were saying to me the other day that the problem is is in the water you might you might be out there surfing for two hours and you might only get like a couple of minutes tops of actual surfing time because the rest of it's spent sitting around waiting. The, the guy's not wrong who said that quote, like spending time in the water mm. is really good. Like today, even if you had enough caught waves, just being out in some bigger surf and mm. being exposed to it, um, you'll start learning something. Yeah. But the problem is um, because there's so much external feedback from the ocean, the waves, the crowd, all this type of stuff, your mind can't deal with all that knowledge. Yeah. So in the water, you only want to really think about one or two things. So by training outside of the water and doing all the simulations, you can layer up when you're training. And then when you figure out how to do the stuff, take that knowledge into the water. Yeah. So that, that for me is really important. So I was doing some um, Muay Thai training. I only did it for like two months with this guy, Michael. He's a really good friend of mine. He's an excellent trainer. Um, so he taught me some some elbows and kicks and punches and stuff. And then I was like, oh, great. I've got a boxing bag at home. I'm going to go and just hammer away at it. And he says, don't you dare. If you go and hit it wrong and you, you're going to unlearn everything I've just taught you. Yeah. He said the twice a week that you're training with me is sufficient to, to get it right. Um, don't go home and do all these crazy punches and punch too hard or punch messy mm. and learn all the bad habits. And then I've got to go and undo all the bad stuff. Yeah. So if, you, if you're unaware of what you're doing in the water and you're just randomly doing stuff, you could pick up bad habits. Yeah, and I think that, I suppose one, one problem there for anybody who is trying to progress their surfing, and well, let's face it, we're all, we're, we're, even if you're a, a, an amazing surfer, you're always still trying to progress, is how, how do you know that you're not doing it right? Like if you haven't got access to to okay. live coaching, what, what can we do? So through the past year that we have known each other, yeah. right, you've done skating on the ramps, yeah. skating on the street, bosu ball, cardboard slide. Um, I've pushed you out in big waves. I've, I've done horrible things to you. <laughs> right. <laughs> that sounds really wrong. The ho- horrible. So when, when you say horrible things, you've got me to hold a hammer while skateboarding so that to yeah. make sure I didn't, so to keep my arm in the right position, otherwise I would have bonked myself on their head. Yeah. There, you've also got me to you have you have me on this really weird heavy bull once as well while I was while I was skateboarding. It always seems to be when I'm skateboarding actually. Because you your hands were so crazy, <laughs> what I did <laughs> was like that. I gave you a heavy weight in your hand. Yeah. So um if you drop into the skate ramp and just push the ball forward, mm. you'd go faster. But if you had it to the side, you'd just turn that way and forward. Yeah. So by weighing your hands up, your mind gets a lot more, um, I don't know, it just sort of starts firing and it, it gives you more understanding of what your arms are doing. Yeah. So it's just giving you awareness. That was a big one. 
Okay, yeah, it, it, is, it, it is awareness. But what I still want to know, and so for any, anyone who's watching who is like, okay, I'm learning this stuff. I've got this idea. Uh, I've got these ideas from you. How do I know that I'm doing it right? That's, that's Because it feels effortless and easy. So when it feels effortless and easy, because you're saying, and I'm, I, I'm just sort of playing a devil's advocate here a little bit, you're saying that if you, if, if you keep doing it and you keep doing it wrong, you're training yourself to do it wrong, which is which before I came to coaching with you, which is what I've been doing for years and years and years. So I had to unlearn all of that stuff. But then there's always this, this, yeah. this, this thought. I'll make it really simple. When you were out in the water today, yep. the best way that you caught, was it difficult or easy? Easy. Okay, done. Yeah. When you generated speed today, was it difficult or easy? Easy, there's a bit of pattern flowing in. <laughs> when you started doing your turns today, yeah. were those just difficult or easy? They were easy. Cool. And then think back to all the times that you struggled on something, you tried really, really hard and it was mm -hmm. difficult, you weren't doing it right. Okay. So then, uh, look, I know, I know that I'm going on a little bit here about the how, how do we know? Because I'm what I'm trying to get at here is for those people that 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 want to improve their surfing that have now learned a few techniques. What I thought was easy a year ago, like I, I thought I thought it was easy a year ago, but now I now I realise that it was hard. But the, the reason why is because I've, I've obviously been lucky enough to have have that coaching. So yeah. So there's that saying, you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. So that's why, again, in the Mindsy, we do the uh, the surf science. Where mm -hmm. The first thing we do is we educate you. So yeah. it's like turning the switch on so you can see what's good and what's bad, what's ugly surfing, what's eloquent, beautiful style, what's good surfing. Yeah, nice, yeah. And then we explain how the body works, how boards work, how um, waves work, and how everything interacts and how the mind works. Yeah. Okay? And then um, in everything that we do, we show you the good and the bad um, and if you're moving well and you're using the wave right and your board right everything's just going to be this this perfect synergy where it just feels effortless do you know what i think we should do i think and give me some likes in the in in the, in the comments or or a yes or just just touch something in would it be really helpful if we were to find some footage of somebody who was somebody who was a beginner Somebody who is intermediate and somebody who is who is good, and then we get you to sort of analyze that bit of footage, just so that you could, so that you can watch it, and then hear Clayton say why that person is has, has progressed and what it is that, that, that they're doing differently. Go, 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 go. No, you, you go. So I get these brain things. Um, okay, so when I tell people to do turns, I don't tell them to turn. I tell them to pass coffee. Yeah. Because passing coffee is easy. So today you did some really big coffee passes. And then I was like, what, did you see the foam? So I'm like, are you twisting around on that coffee cup? So the more you twist and pass mm. behind you, the more spray you throw. Yeah. So I suppose I'm not asking you to do difficult surf moves. I'm asking you to do everyday body movements and functions. Yeah. Now when you pass coffee cups, you don't bend your back and pass coffee. <laughs> you know, you, you keep your back straight and you twist. Unless you're an angry barista, uh, barista. yeah. Then you then you brush a coffee like that. So, what, so can, can I jump in one one thing ahead. there as well? Because I think I think this is a really important tip, and this is one thing that I've noticed a lot. And it was something that I used to do, and you stopped me doing it. Is you said, and you and you said it then was you asked me, did I see the did I see the the, the spray? And I said no. And that's because a lot of people who are surfing are trying to look at what they're doing, aren't they, rather than looking ahead. And so every time I was looking at, at the spray, it was. I wasn't looking at the next. What I, what I, yeah, not the spray, probably the foam. Yeah. Yeah. So so what I mean by that is when you're doing the turn, you could just turn your, your neck and twist your waist, mm. and you can gauge the distance between you and the foam. So yeah. you know how long to help turn for, and also how heavy that section is. If it's really soft, you can go back and bounce off it. If it's barely turn because that way is running yeah. off down the line again. So by looking, you'll know. It's the same as riding a bicycle. If you look, you, you kind of you can figure out what kind of turn to do. Mm. But without that relative information, you don't know what turn to do, how long to do it, how hard to push, all these types of things. Yeah. You're missing information. Yeah, absolutely. And so I think that that would that, be really helpful if, if we did do a, a video where we got a beginner, an intermediate, and an advanced, just so that you can see what it 
looks like. I, I suppose, and then, then the only way to really compare is to is to get somebody to film you surfing. And yeah, submit some videos if they want, and I'll happily go through some. Oh, there you go. If you don't That's mind being, uh, if if you don't mind being. Uh, critiqued and analysed in front of everybody who's going to watch, then, uh, then, then then maybe send a few videos through. And if we get uh, if, if we get some some good ones, then we'll uh, we'll 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 get Clayton to do some I'm some some basically coaching. Super super guilty of being very very honest, so I apologise. Yeah, I, I know you're upfront. very honest. <laughs> but, so what with the simulation side of things? So so the main things in the program are the cardboard surfer, the Bosu surfer and the skate training what street and ramp street and ramp with things. with the skate what fascinates me with the way that you think about your approach to coaching and you mentioned this before a lot of coaches focus on just in the water stuff and then a little bit of video analysis but they never really solve those problems you really look for ways to solve the problems out of the water so like i, I always look to other sports for mm. for answers so um, Imagine if uh, Muhammad Ali went and had a fight, lost the fight, and his coach went, hey, don't worry. I video filmed it. Look, this is where he went wrong. Like your uppercut. Yeah. And left it there. No training. Just uh, on the next fight, just try try to use your uppercut more. Yeah. We got, we got, we got, so, we got Andy who wants to be dissected. He says, I'm a great love rat. <laughs> Send in a video. So pretty but, much like, <laughs> fair enough. Yes. You got to do it where, where the problem is, but then afterwards, how do you fix it? Yeah. So, so he would have to do multiple repetitions, teaching the body when to use it, how to use it, the timing of when to do that all. And surfers don't do that. They don't put in the hard yards to get that right. Mm. So with the simulation, what they're doing now is they're getting the technique right. Yeah. And then all they've got to do is get the timing right in the water. And that's so much easier to get right once you have the technique. Yeah, absolutely. And so the with, with the ramp that we've got outside, you've shown me how to, how to do a turn. And you've gone, right, I'm going to disappear now for half an hour. And it's literally just turn. Yeah. Turn. Numbers. Turn. Numbers. And, 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 and with that, it isn't it, it, like it's stop each time. Go again. Stop. Go yeah. again, stop. As soon as you think you've got something, it's like, no, stop, do it again, find it, find it, find it. So it's trying to find that that magic feeling where, uh, what's it called, like flow state? Flow state, yeah. So as soon as you find yeah. that flow state, I stop you and I go, okay, find it again. So um, yeah, I'm a bit of a, I was gonna say DRC, okay, but uh, yeah, it's really important to um, repeat, repeat, repeat. Yeah, absolutely. and. I, I think it's a bit your your coaching style is a kind of and I, I've made this reference in a few videos. Real Mr. Miyagi and I feel that anybody who's been coached is a bit like like Daniel. If you've seen Karate Kid and the the original Karate Kid, not not the new one. Like so that. yeah, the whole Daniel Larusso and he's doing all these exercises and you're thinking and, and Daniel Larusso is going, why are I doing these exercises? Why are you getting me to paint your fence? Why are you getting me to wax the car? And then Mr. Miyagi goes, but, and then he goes, I'll oh, paint the fence and he starts throwing these punches and, always, and it something happens. It's, it's almost like that's what happens with you. I, I, I trick people into surfing well. Yeah. Because <laughs> if you ask them to do something, they probably, uh, their mind goes, no, I can't do it. And then the body goes, oh, I don't know how to do it. Yeah. But you go, pass coffee, really good cutback. Well done. Yeah. What do you mean? So, um, yeah, I, I try mind Jedi mind tricks on them and just, it works. Yeah, absolutely. So the, so the land-based stuff is really important and it is, it, it ties in so importantly to surfing. And the, the good thing with, the, with, the, with all of the simulation stuff from the cardboard surfer, which you came up with years and years and years ago, to the the Bosu surf, which was your your your, your, your first thing, and and yeah. and the the skating stuff still evolving. And and if you are on the Gold Coast, we mentioned it in a video a couple of uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think it was that there's going to be. So if you're on the Gold Coast, there's a new skate park opening up. Isn't yeah, there? Level Up Skate Park in Corumban uh, with Trevor Ward. And you're you're teaming up with Trevor, aren't you? Yeah. So I'm going to be doing the skate, the surf skate section of that, and then Trevor's a really amazing air coach. So um, anyone who wants to learn the air game, um, I'm going to be handing them over to Trevor. And did, he'll... did you say that Trevor was 
skated with the same he, sort of era as Tony Hawk. Yeah, he was the same era as Tony Hawk. Was one of wow. the top five in the world. Um, I th- he could top five in the world. He was so like, if you want to get your air game on, he was one of the first skateboarders to do a five forty. Um, I think forehand and backhand. So wow, yeah, he's, he's pretty amazing. And and so he's been teaching airs within. That's good. And it's, it's, it's indoors yeah. as well, isn't it? So even if, yeah, even, even, if, even if the weather's bad, you can still go and get your skate on. Or if it's small and onshore and blue bottles, um, yeah, go do your surf simulation training. Yeah, and I, I think that's that's the, 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 the great thing about the way that you coach. You can either be learning about the ocean, learning all the science side of things. If, if, if the waves are really bad, so you can do the, the, the science at night when you can't surf, if the waves are really bad, then you can do the simulation. You can go out and, and do some skating in the street or slide some cardboard around the kitchen floor or jump on a BOSU ball. Uh, and, if the, and if the waves are pumping, then you can jump in and do all the surf stuff. I figure there's two types of people. There's, there's the people who want to close the door and train without their friends noticing. So they suddenly get to the beach and they're ripping. <laughs> so we've got those for you. And then there's people like me who are probably slightly lazy and I like, I like training in groups. Right, yeah. So, like, if, if someone's running next to me, I'm like, he's slogging, I'm slogging, then I don't mind doing it. But I hate doing it on my own. Yeah. So, um, then you can sort of do it in group training. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, if somebody did want to find out more about the Cardboard Surfer, or they want to find out more about the BOSU Surfer and that there, then they can check out the, yeah. the, the online program? Yeah, check out the online program. Um, We've got some changes happening in the future. Jeremy, our partner, is going to be um, coming up with some new ideas. Which Jeremy, Jeremy's probably furiously working in the background uh, right right now. I haven't, I haven't seen him put any comments through this evening, but uh, I'm sure that he is there. But yeah, he's he's going to be making a few changes. Yeah, and also we're going to be updating the surf skates ramp soon. Um, yeah. So probably the next say two to three weeks, that's going to be dropping, and then after that, we've got Mind Surfer dropping. So um, yeah, Mind, Mind Surfer is going to be amazing. Oh, I've, I've, it's a lady called Kim Bancroft who's been really amazing at helping put all my crazy thoughts down on paper because I, I have too many weird, random thoughts. Well, the Claytonisms. Yeah. Claytonisms. Yeah. So she, she's been able to sort of explain it and uh, get them on paper before I, they, I lose them all. Yeah, absolutely. And well, there's a couple of questions that have come in, yeah. which, which we'll go to. If anybody has got a question, type it in. As I say, if I do miss your question, I'm really sorry. Uh, I'm going to just go, go to the, the mobile phone here. But uh, if, if, if they do want to check out the, the online program, it is amanzisurf.com. Just go to amanzi, it is amanzisurf.com, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, cool. Am, amanzisurf.com. And, and do the surf analysis. I, I can't explain. Oh, yeah, that's a free thing. Yeah. yeah. So, like, if you went to a doctor, the doctor would go, well, what's wrong? So, so many, so many people go to surf coaching and just go, uh, fix my surfing. So I'll go, well, what's, what part of it? They go, oh, I don't know. Just watch me and fix it. And it does my head in. So um, what we've done is we've got a, a wheel. And the one is about controllable. So it's about your body and the things that you can control. And we have a whole bunch of tests. And um, you almost plot like a spider yeah. graph on it. And you can see what's lacking. And ideally, you want to blow that wheel up so that your surfing starts to move. If you've got a puncture on that wheel, you've got to fix that. And then the other thing is the um, the uncontrollables, which is the ocean, and that's a, a separate wheel. And there's questions about can you read the ocean? Do you know what you paddle out? Um, how's your pop up? How's yep. your speed generation? So there's a lot of um, good information that will help direct you to whichever skill set that you need to improve on. Yeah, it's it's an amazing tool, and the exercises that you go through it's. It's like years and years and years of knowledge got onto this one page of A4 where you fill, where, where, where you fill in this wheel. And it's, 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 it's amazing how that tool has, has been pulled together, taking all, all that information and refining it down into this or distilling it down into this, this simple circle that you can fill in and instantly have a really good grasp as to whereabouts you are in your surfing progression. So I'll, I'll give you an idea. Like um, I had a guy come to coaching the one time and he was going, um, I'm struggling on speed generation. So I was going, okay, no worries. And ultimately, the guy had a pop-up problem. Whenever he popped up, this knee was pointing out sideways. So it was like his momentum was going in two different directions. And he was sidling like a crab. And he was almost wobbling. 
So he couldn't coordinate a maneuver. maneuver. So we had to go back and fix the pop-up mm. so that the knee came forward, the chest was forward, and then he could start coordinating the maneuvers. So in his mind, he thought, oh, I've just got a speed generation issue, when actually we had to go back and unpick it and re sort of re-engineer his pop-up. And then yeah. uh, str after that, his surfing just went to the next level. And I, th I think you've touched on another little nugget of gold there. And I've heard you talking about this quite a lot and that is the, the, the stereotypical image that you see on like a learn to surf truck or, or any of these websites where it's, it's yeah, it's, it, it's, it's all like stood up sideways, that sort of that, that, uh, like Hawaii five O kind of, kind of thing. And like a golden nugget straight away from you is if you just concentrate on bringing that knee forward, like stop standing sideways and twist and bring your knee forwards. Yeah. It's that's instantly going to make your surfing so, so, so much better. Well, you're on camera. That that's kind of Puma. That there. I like the way you pointed so your butt towards me with the Puma. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, twist and put and put the knee forward. So there's a couple of questions here. Ah, uh, Chris Mills is on. Chris Mills is watching. Chris is uh, awareness. Uh, okay. I can't, Chris, I can't bring your comment up on, uh, if, if you don't know who Chris is, then make sure that you go and check out. Chris um, is a surf strength coach, yeah. and he's been a buddy of mine, and we've done a lot of surf trips with um, him and uh, Tweety. Yeah. And, um, yeah, we, we helped come up with a lot of this information on those boat trips with, with guests and interacting and asking questions. Mm. So he's been instrumental in, in a lot of this. And, and Chris also put together a part of the wheel as well where we where we talk about the way the way that our bodies move and that kind of thing so so make sure that you check out uh chris's stuff let me just see okay awareness and understanding has to pre has to precede drills and exercises have to first be aware conscious of better options science first that is gold because so many people yeah. just want to get out in the water and i remember when i very first came for catching with you you said first thing you got to do is you got to sit down I'm going to go through the science with you. You yeah. wouldn't do anything with me until I understood the science. Chris, thank you so much for, for, for putting that through. Shem, I can't bring the comment up because it needs to be up on the screen. So, really. Yeah, Chris is, again, really good at explaining stuff. Um, so you have to have the awareness, number one, of how your body moves, number two, of what you're actually trying to do. And then with that in mind, you need to start trying to move um, more effortlessly. Um, there's actually a, a study called Feldenkrais, and it's how to move efficiently. And um, yeah, that's what we're trying to do in surfing. It's kind of like if you were to pick up a box, you wouldn't bend over and pick up a box. You kind of want to drop your knees to pick up the box. So that would be efficient moving. And a lot of people, when they surf, they bend their backs, which is straining their back mm. muscles. So if you straighten your back and then start using your legs more, um, you'll be a way better surfer and it's better on your body. So what you can do is then jump on the BOSU ball, strengthen the legs, and then you won't have to use your back. You need to save yourself from getting sore back. Um, yeah. So all that bad technique just le later on leads to, um, to maybe some injuries in surfing too. Could we add in to the online program a section which could be like the housework surfer? So as you're walking around the house picking things up, you, in instead of bending down, you, you're like, crap, or am I just being a stupid? <laughs> uh you can do whatever you want but um yeah yeah don't don't listen to me listen to closure okay? i think visualization is a really good tool i remember being in my parents car with my hand and just surfing up down left right um there's bushes i was banking with bushes like your imagination is the best thing just um use it however you see fit okay right let's 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 dive into a couple of a couple of these questions okay uh, in, in actual fact, b before we do, let's let's totally wrap up the simulation side of things. So, okay. so anybody watching now, if you were to tell them to do one thing that they could practice, say, the, so the surf's flat, it's onshore, there's there's nothing happening. What one thing could they do for half an hour to improve their surfing? Get a piece of cardboard and just learn how to slide it across the ground um, and just mark it and challenge a mate. Just um... Yeah. Cardboard slide, slide competitions. Then if you do have a BOSU ball, um, learn how to jump onto the BOSU ball, have a cup of water in your hand and don't spill the water. And then if your balance is good, put it on the ground by lunging 
and then stand, stand up again. Okay. So you just put the cup down and it'll really work those, those fine little stabilizer muscles in your legs. We take zero responsibility if you happen to spill water all over your computer when you're doing it, when you end up flying backwards off of the BOSU and uh, throwing your water everywhere. So look, let's dive into this because I know that we're, we're coming up to the hour mark. Let's do a couple of, couple of quick questions. So this is from Louise, Louise uh, Deva. I don't understand the Oreo concept on a short board. I'm 5'10", my board is 5'9". How do I do the Oreo? Okay. So the Oreo is is pass the cardboard. The Oreo is is you you put up a short video and it went crazy on the internet. People just loving the whole Oreo concept. I don't know whether it's people just love Oreo biscuits, but the concept is is gold. So do you want me to hold something or no? So I'll just put this on the camera so you can see. A lot of people when they paddle, they put their chins on their board and they they really really try hard to paddle. Um, what that sometimes does with your chin down, you, you can't get a very deep stroke. So you end up going wide and padding like a lizard. So by arching your back and leaning back, you've got to be able to paddle deeper and get a straighter stroke. So the arching the back is gold in getting a better paddle stroke. Now, secondly, when you arch your back, it puts pressure on the tail. If you've got your chin down, it puts pressure on the nose and your board will do this. And when, when the wave sucks up, It'll just flip your board over and end up going over the falls and doing somersaults. By putting pressure on the tail of the board and by leaning back, the wave will try to push this up. So put your hand your hands. If you're pushing, or put, put your finger there, if you're pushing down and the wave is pushing up, okay, there's tension. So by the board going forward, it dissipates all that tension. Mm. So the Oreo biscuit is... If the wave pushes up and you push down, the surfboard is the cream which is going to get squashed out the front. Yeah. And so I'm hoping, Louise, that that answers your question. Uh, I mean, it, it, it seems like, like Louise is, is, is asking, she understands it on a long board but not on a short board, but it's exactly the same concept. Yeah. So what happens on a short board? You have to be at the bus stop. So what I mean by that, if you want to catch a bus, don't sit 10 metres away from the bus. Um, sit at the bus stop, you're going to catch easier. Mm -hmm. So when a wave breaks, you want to be in the hollow part of it, and then the Oreo biscuit part will work really well. It won't work on the shoulder. So it's potentially, if you're sitting on the shoulder, um, you're not getting enough lift from that wave, yeah. and you're going to struggle to catch it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Louise. And Will Howard, hey, Clayton, can you share your best three tips for pig dogging and getting stable in that position? Okay, number one, tie your shoelace. So when you tie your shoelace, keep your back straight and sort of drop your knees so like you're going to tie your shoelace. Okay. Number two, pitch your ear on the wave. So when the wave breaks, there's this, there's this top corner. Try to get your ear into that top corner. So if I'm sideways, make a barrel for me and okay, so get your ear on it, like almost what's Ant saying. So water's throwing over and it's sucking up. So you've got water going two different directions. But if you lean on it, you're going to get stability in the barrel. Otherwise, you're going to kind of hit the wobbles. So mm. just by leaning on it, it's like body surfing and you'll fit into that wave really well. So number one, um, drop your knee and tie your shoelace. Number two, keep your chest level pointing where you want to go and lean on it. And that's the best way to pig dog. Excellent. Now... now. I'm going to play the part of the real intermediate surfer. Yeah. Okay. And so some of you might have been listening then and thought to yourself, and I'm, probably, I'm, I'm now going to show how little I know. What does pig dogging mean? Uh, backhand shoe bride, where you grab the rail. Okay. Cool. So there you go. Pig dogging in the uh, dictionary means backhand, <laughs> backhand shoe, shoe briding where you're grabbing the rail. Excellent. What else do we have here? Ah, so we've got a question in this feed here from Andy. Are Indo boards good or do they teach backbending? I know that Chris, we, we had this comment on the Amanzi Insiders, I think it was, and Chris put up a bit of a comment about this one as well. So if you look at the, the, the pictures of when Captain Cook, I think he went to Hawaii and he discovered surfing in Hawaii. Like all the pictures, it looks like guys are on top of the phone and 
by doing this. So we're not, we don't surf that way on a, like you stand on an end board, like your board doesn't roll back and then your board doesn't roll forward. You try to actually get rail to rail. Okay. Because when you're on rail, there's less board in the water, there's less friction. So your board actually accelerates. So the endo board, you're standing flat, whereas actually when you surf, you're trying to get on rail. Okay. Um, so it's it's a great tool to teach balance. I mean, anything where you learn balance is good, mm -hmm. um, but it's not probably the best surf simulation training you okay. can do. And while I don't want to necessarily say anything negative, what instantly sort of pops into my head, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, you, you talk about learning bad technique, if an indoor board just stays flat, is, is that teaching you to surf flat? Yes. Okay. Yeah. What, what, why I like the BOSI ball is it responds to your body and your movement. So if you stand on the front foot, the ball will roll forward. If you lean over, the ball will roll sideways. Mm. And that, that's more like indicative of what a surfboard does. Yeah. Uh, and even a skateboard. In, 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 in saying that, the Indo board does have uh, a thing that, that you can buy, I think, that simulates. Yeah, I think there's an attachment. All the different angles. Like a little um, cushion or pillow that you can put underneath to simulate a BOSI ball. Okay. And Mark, I find the top turn difficult to actually, I find the top turn difficult to actually turn the board on a slower wave. Any tips? Yeah, okay. So, um, bada, 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 bada. On a slower wave, if if you go vertical, the wave will almost hit the board and push it down. But if you're on the shoulder, okay, you don't have that push from the wave to push it back around yeah. again. So you want to try to get a more of a vertical approach, and that'll help push the board back down. Um, having said that, if you've got no speed, you are going to feel that you're going to almost want to wobble and catch rather and fall off. Yeah. So um, you need to perhaps work on your compression extension to get the board up there. Um, yeah. Excellent. Hope, hope that helps. Hope that helps. Yeah. And so, so um, we'll we'll finish we'll finish on this because I'm I'm well aware of uh, of the hour mark and look we're we're gonna, we're, we're going to be doing a lot of these lives so just make sure that you stay tuned on all the, on all the different channels we'll, we'll be putting out content to really. Uh, help you improve your surfing and and to create, as I said at the very beginning, trying to create this 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 community of surfers who just want to go out there and have a really good time and just uh, and and progress their surfing. So let's finish on this. It's not really a a question, but I know that you'll have a good thing to say on it. But Louise, and so this is now going back to when you said about paddling and people people putting their chin down. Yeah. So Louisa said, so all that bullshit talk of people telling you to put your head down to paddle hard is counterproductive to the no paddling Oreo technique. Yes. Okay, so when... I thought I actually thought you were going to finish on just a yes then, but no, you're going to go. <laughs> um, when people have very poor posture in the water, they don't move well mm -hmm. and they don't paddle well. They're, they're almost like lull on their boards and roll over. So when the wave hits them, um, it's almost like hitting a rock. It just goes over them. And that's where you probably got those coaches going, just try to paddle, like get some momentum yeah. to actually get into the wave. And what it is is they almost don't have the, the, the back strength to create that arch, that lift. Yeah. So the more lift you create, the easier it is to catch that wave. Yeah, and, I, uh, and I, I've really noticed that now. It's something that I'm, I'm working on is to – because you see guys out surfing – and you watch them catch waves, and you're thinking, "How did you get on that? Like you didn't even paddle. Like what is what? What is your weird magic trick? Is what you're sort of thinking inside your head." And I've, I've watched you catch waves. And I've, it, I've, I'm sure that sometimes I watch you catch a wave, and you haven't even paddled. I'm yeah. just, maybe you're doing the fart noise in the water, and that's giving you a, your, <laughs> your propulsion. I'm not sure, but I see so many good guys, and now the one thing that is definitely evident in all of those is that that arch back. It's almost like yeah. they just turn and when they you've feel, said a frog leg kit, haven't you? Well, if, if you're pushing your tail down, you'll feel when the wave comes to you because it wants to lift you up. Mm. That's your cue to paddle. Okay, so as soon as the wave tries to lift you up, then you can just go one, two and glide in. But if you just got your head down, you paddling, you're not really feeling that lift and an interaction with the water. Yeah, awesome.
Well, guys, thank you so, so, so much for tuning in, Clayton. Thank you so much for dropping a ton of gold again tonight. I, I do, I'm going to have to watch it back and find out what the actual Clayton and yet, Claytonism was. And if you've got any um, clips you want to send through, if anyone else has, I'm, I'm happy to dissect it and, and try to help you guys out there. Andy's uh, is is here on the Gold Coast. It's, it's someone. Uh, he's a he's he's a friend of mine. So oh, I, I, I might I might actually I might actually go out there and film him one day and. Uh, and then bring the footage in. The, oh, the, there is to, there is no excuses. And then we'll uh, on the rank too. That'll be interesting. We'll we'll, we'll analyze it. So yeah, guys, thank you so 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 much for tuning in. Whatever you've got planned for the for the rest of the week and for the and for the weekend ahead, please get out there and enjoy it. And as you say, it's it, I think it was in two videos ago. Somebody asked what was your one tip, and we were, thought you were going to give a surfing tip, and you said just it was like enjoy every day, wasn't it? Ah, oh, just yeah. Can't remember what it was. It's gone. But it was it was basic. I know what it was. It was it was about being present and enjoying enjoying every day. Just finding something to be stoked about every day. So get out there, do that. And if you do go out there for a surf, then make sure you film it, send it through to us, and then we'll be doing Just, some analysis. Um, oh, go. Take the small wins. Small wins. There, there, there we go. As as Clayton's words of wisdom for this week. Take the small wins. Yeah. And on that, we will finish. Thanks so much for tuning in. That's it for me and Clayton. See you in the next video. Thanks. Yeah.